Hi, I'm Dr. Wallen. I'm going to be your instructor for the Astronomy 1030 course. Today we're going to talk about the gradings and topics associated with the course. Uh, hopefully you've already gone through the video that'll tell you about the resources associated with this course, the things on D2L, the textbook exercises, and, and things like that. So see the other video for getting started. Right now I want to start with just a couple quick slides to give you an introduction to how the grading policy works and why we're doing the things we're doing. So this first graph I'm going to show you is the final grades from Astronomy 1030. So in Astronomy 1030, this was a distribution of grades during a semester a couple, couple years ago. And you can see there's a, a lot of A's and there's a lot more B's and C's. But if you look at the number of D's, F's, and W's for withdrawal, there's a huge number of those as well. And if you looked at this, you might think, well, you know, gosh, that's terrible. I'm not going to do well in this class. I'll probably be one of the people that gets D's and F's. It turns out I can usually tell who's going to get a D and F by a simple thing. And that's just how much homework and how much attendance you have in class. So let me show you the next slide. So this next slide is showing the distribution of grades for students who attended and did most of the homework. So they had to get 85% of the available points that were available from homework um, and from the in-class exercises. So we're going to be doing live exercises during the Zoom sessions. We used to do clickers. But the basic idea is this, that if you get 85% of the points associated with the course, this is the grade distribution that you see. So mostly A's, some B's, a little bit less C's, and almost no F's. What this is telling you is if you do the work, you'll get the grade, right? If you do the work and get 85% of the points, you can do really well in the course. By the way, getting 85% of the homework is really easy because if you get a question wrong, you lose a tiny amount of credit. If you get it wrong again, you lose more, but you get multiple tries on the homework questions. And in the in-class exercises, most of the points you get are just from participating. So just be aware, you do the work and you'll get the grade. Now, let me contrast that with the next slide, which is showing the students who got less than 80% of the points associated with the homework and clickers. Again, the in-class exercises and also the, the online homework. So if you got less than 80%, that could be all the way down to zero. So it's a big range here. But the thing you see is there's almost no A's, almost no B's, and most of the scores are F's. Almost all of the F's associated with the course are associated with the people who didn't do the work. So if you do the work, your chances of getting a good grade are really high, and if you don't do the work, your chances of getting a good grade are really low. It's about a factor of five difference in your chances of passing the course or getting an A you have a five times higher chance of getting an A if you do the work and a five times higher chance of failing the class if you don't. So just be aware that all the homework that we're doing, all the in-class exercises we're doing, that pricey textbook and electronic access that you're getting is worth it because it ensures you do well on the exam. So let's talk about some basics. So office hours are going to be every day, 9 o'clock to 10 o'clock in the morning on Zoom. Uh, I'll be available at other times as well, but if the Zoom link that we talked about in the other video and I'll have up on the, on the main page is going to be there open and ready for you all the time. So you'll just be able to click on the link and come into my office hours. There might be a waiting room if there's another student, but you'll be able to come in and talk to me. Um, if you want to meet me at other times, just let me know. I'll set up a Zoom session with you. We can talk on the phone. Um, you know, the office hours are just a way of me keeping that Zoom window open for a full hour. So don't don't feel that you can't talk to me at other times. Just email me, call me, let me know what you need, and we'll set up a time that we can we can chat. Besides me, there's two other people that can be very helpful with the course, and that's Graham and Patrick. They're going to be the teaching assistants for the course. Uh, they're going to help with some in-class exercises and monitoring of, of the, the course as things go on. Um, they're also going to set up review sessions for you. So the review sessions for the course will be online and we'll have some some like games probably on the Sunday night and maybe Saturday night uh, before the exams for the most part. But the idea will be to give you a, 
kind of a low stakes review question so you can practice. The uh, grading policies, the lecture schedule, and the due dates and study hints are going to all be in the syllabus. So again, be aware of that. Um, so let's break it down for course grades. So 70% of your course grades are going to be based on seven tests. Each of these tests is really short, uh, but there are seven of them. So we're going to have them about every two weeks. 15% of your grade is based on live in-class exercises. And 15% of your grade is also based on electronic homework. So 30% of your grade is based on that textbook access stuff that we talked about in the previous video. All the course announcements and the information about the course are in D2L. Everything's linked through there, um, including the Zoom session link. So again, take a look at the other video for details. A common question I get is about Astronomy 1031 Lab. So if you signed up for this course, there's you are almost certainly signed up for the lab. That is a separate course. It's a one credit course that has a separate grade to it. This is a three credit course. Um, so this is the lecture. The lab is separate. Um, most of you need the, need the lab for requirements for general education. So we put them together, basically, even though they are two separate courses. The preliminary exam schedule is here. You can see this is basically every two weeks. I'll post this on, on, um, on D2L as well. Uh, but just kind of be aware that it's going to be every two weeks we're having an exam. The final exam is December 7th. Which kind of brings us to the next topic, which is the makeup in the class. So I don't do makeup as a general policy. I don't like to give makeup tests. I generally don't give makeup tests. Um, there may be some very, very rare exceptions, like you're hospitalized. Okay, And even then, I would want you to use the drops that we have available instead. So we have a bunch of drops built into the class, so you don't need to do makeup. So for example, we drop the lowest two exams. And that means of the seven exams, only five of them count, your best five. Um, now, you have to use that carefully, because just because we're dropping two doesn't mean that you shouldn't be attending the other exams. You have to be thinking about um, how all the different exams are going to work together. So starting off, if you end up drops at the beginning of the semester, you can't drop anything later. If you do really well on the first five exams, you won't need to take the final exam. So keep that in mind. You could, you could make your life a lot easier if you do well early on. So we also drop five of the homework assignments and five of the in-class exercises. So the idea of this is to make it so that if you have to miss something, if you have a dentist appointment or your car breaks down or you have a family emergency, you can just go and do that and not lose any points. Um, you don't have to report them to me, although keep track of these. If there's some reason that you had uh, something major going on and you think you're going to miss a lot, you should let me know so we can start working something out. But I, I, I want you to understand the drops are there for a reason. They're for you to use them in, in the time of emergencies. It will probably boost your grade as well a little bit, but that's kind of a secondary thing. The main thing is having them available for the emergencies. The exams themselves, again, are every two weeks. They're short. They're going to be typically 20 to 30 questions. Oh, there'll be some multiple choice, some matching, some identification, things like that. So um, again, the two lowest scores are going to be dropped from those. Um, you have to have a photo ID. The exams are going to be done through Examity. So the Examity system is going to be the way we're going to be doing all of our exams. OK. So working together uh, is fine for in-class exercises and discussions. Working together as a study group is fantastic. And talking about homework is great, too. But if you start relying on somebody too much, you're going to not do well in the course, right? You have to do your own work. One of the best things you could do is get a study group where everybody comes up with sort of five questions from every lecture. Um, and then you exchange them. So you start thinking about what did other people see about the lecture that I didn't see. For the exams, you have to do the work on your own. We're going to be using the Examity software, which is going to monitor your ID. You're going to have to do an ID check. It also requires a web camera and microphone. So it's going to be monitoring what's happening in the room. It also monitors which windows you have open on, on your computer. So it's going to be a full proctoring system during the exam. and 
cheating is not going to be allowed and will lead to honor code violations. Which brings us to the icky stuff, which is cheating. Cheating on an exam, getting help from others during exams is uh, obviously completely uh, out of bounds. So don't try to get help from others during the exams. Uh, do your own work. The penalty for this is failing the class and also getting reported to judicial affairs. We are monitoring uh, cheating. We're taking it very seriously. Um, in the time of COVID, it's, we have to be particularly careful. Uh, one more icky thing is any disruptive behavior that we have or see during the class, we're going to be reporting to judicial affairs. So just be aware that that's, you know, there are penalties for misbehaving. A couple quick things on homework. The homework, again, is from the Mastering Astronomy. Uh, we're going to have homework due basically every day. Um, the only exception is right after a test. I give you one day off because we won't have a lecture that day. So I just test over the material from the previous lecture. The thing to note is that the they are helpful. These are questions that I picked out. So these are not just random questions. These are things that I did pick out. Um, and I would strongly, you know, suggest looking at the previous video, but also use your MTSU email to register. Make sure your pop-ups and your cookies are allowed for the website. Uh, make sure you have Flash enabled. There's only a few questions that have that left, but um, finding them is difficult. So just be aware that that's an issue. And, um, you know, do the homework yourself. Don't try just Googling answers. It sounds like it'd be really easy to do, and it is. You could just Google answers and, wow, I'll get everything right. But you won't learn anything. And the point of the homework is to find out if you know something so you know what to study. Um, a couple quick hints. Make sure you review the material from the lectures within 24 hours of, of the lecture. If you do that, um, and by the way, take notes during the lecture. During the live Zoom sessions, take notes. Get a notebook. Write down things. Don't just assume because I say something over Zoom that you've learned it. It's not magical. It doesn't go from my mouth into your brain and stays there. It doesn't. Um, retention from lectures under good circumstances is about 15%. On Zoom, with distractions, it's probably going to be lower than that. So having a notebook that lets you focus on the material, write things down, get the major points, it's going to help you a lot. The other thing is figure out when you're studying and reviewing what you don't understand. So go through the notes, figure out what were the five or six main points of the lecture. What was I trying to tell you? And what was the most confusing parts of those things? If they're confusing, you should spend time studying them. Also, looking at the in-class live exercises and the homework, if you get a question wrong, that probably means you didn't know it very well, and that's a thing you should spend time studying. Don't spend time studying things you know. Figure out what you don't know and study that instead. So, again, if you review within 24 hours, what that does is it moves the ideas from the lecture into long-term memory. If you don't review within about 48 hours, if you don't go back and look at the lectures within 48 hours, you lose the information. It doesn't go into long-term memory. So when you go to the cram for the test, it's like starting over again. Regular short study sessions are much better than cramming at the last part. And by the way, by doing this, I don't mean you have to spend three hours after every lecture. Spend half an hour, 45 minutes, just writing some major ideas down. Go through your notebook, outline what was important. What were the big ideas? What are the five questions I'm going to ask you about the lecture? If you can do that regularly and you start sharing that with a few friends, you'll do really well on the exams. And this, these techniques of reviewing after 24 hours, figuring out what you don't know, and studying what you don't know will work in any class. So just be aware of that as well. Um, the way you succeed is attending the lectures and taking notes, participating in the discussions and in the in-class exercises, studying the book and your notes when you're confused, particularly when you're confused, um, asking yourself, what were the main points? What are the questions I'm going to ask? Doing the homework assignments and attending the review sessions. And when you come to the test, they're going to be really familiar. You'll do really well with those. The topics of the class are, of course, my favorite part. This is all dull stuff that we have to cover. But the topics are great. We're going to start off with a motion of the Earth and how that affects things we see in the sky. So motion of the Earth and the planets. 
We'll talk about daily motion, the rotation of the Earth. We'll talk about annual motion going around the sun, seasons, planetary motion, motion of the moon and moon phases. And we'll put this all together in a coherent picture about how things are moving in the sky. From there, we'll talk about the planets. We'll talk about our solar system and the things we know based on all the modern probes, all the modern data, and how we can put this all together in a coherent picture of how the different pieces fit together. We'll move from there to how we measure stars about how stars are measured, how we actually know a star has a temperature of 6,000 degrees and how it's 37 light years away. Um, doing those measurements is tricky, but it's also very understandable and it's a basis for understanding the universe. From there, we'll talk about stellar evolution or really life cycles of stars. Everything from gas clouds to the formation of protostars to something called main sequence stars then moving up to red giants and red supergiants, and then in some cases going supernova, forming white dwarfs, neutron stars, and black holes. So the whole cycle of things is what we cover in that section. It turns out that stars alone are interesting, but when you put them together they form galaxies. Galaxies are agglomerations of billions of stars. So we'll talk about how galaxies work how different galaxies have different characteristics and different populations of stars. Some have basically just old stars, some have ongoing star formation. Some have giant supermassive black holes at the center. And we'll try to put that together in a coherent picture as well. Which leads us to the next section, cosmology. Studying the universe as a whole. Thinking about the entire structure of the universe as one thing talking about how it's expanding, how things are changing, and the implications that has in terms of our future and past. And then finally, we get to the section of class which is ongoing cutting-edge science that hasn't produced a result yet, and that's a search for life outside of Earth. So we'll talk about how we're doing that by looking at planets and how we're doing it with radio telescopes and all these different ways that we're searching for life in the universe and why that actually might work out in the next 20 or so years. So that's a quick summary of where we're going this semester and the different things you have to know. I look forward to working with you in class, and we'll see you on the 24th at 1020.